Welcome back to Roman's Christmas. After exhaustively searching my brain and definitely not cheating, uh, we have come across our third suspect, who isn't me, in the attempted murder of the Red Dragon Bard Anzox. And that is Perrin the Priest, the one who, who asked us to go get the rosary to begin with. And in fact, I think it's very suspicious because his story doesn't jive with one of our other suspects, that being Vin, uh, Vincel, merchant. Vincel says that Heron was the one that requested the prayer for the evening that instigated sending Anzox upstairs to get the rosary when he was crushed by the ladder. However, Heron says that Heron was the one who asked for the prayer to be read, which doesn't jive with the fact that it was goddamn Vincel who said it. And now, on further questioning, Vincel's pointing the finger back at Heron, saying that Heron was the one. So their stories jive with each other, but not with reality. As the owner of the robe is read, do you have anything to explain? It, is there anything to explain? I mean, to be fair, during the VG earlier, we could see the rosary on your chest. Granted, that's probably because the artist didn't draw you without a rosary previously, but it's still very suspicious. For example, did you go upstairs during the day? Why was the rosary not with you? Why did you pray before meals today and not before? And tell me anything you think was strange. Okay. I have been downstairs all day, and I believe everyone can testify to that. I left my rosary in my room, so I had to go upstairs temporarily today. What's wrong with praying before meals? Speaking of something strange, the door in my room was locked. Does that count? Something smells fishy. Maybe I'll press harder for further information. So, uh, as we learned last time, and probably in previous episodes, uh, but I keep forgetting because I do these one week apart, uh, at this point we can just ask them all of these questions and it will have no impact on the case. Did you go upstairs today even once? Did you smoke a marijuana even once? Everyone saw me. Of course not. What should I ask? Regarding the rosary, I would like to ask a question. What if the rosary? Why did you leave the rosary in your room? I thought it was usually carried with you. I'd usually put it on the nightstand because I'm afraid I'll accidentally soil it. Uh, before meal. Why did you pray before the meal today? Seems strange. I prayed before every meal. Is that a problem? Not publicly. Why was your door being locked? It's strange. Don't you know? I never locked the door. What? I believe in God physically and mentally, and I believe God can protect me from all calamities. So the door was unlocked when you left today? Absolutely. That was... okay, weird. Please add what you mentioned to your testimony. Ashton, please testify again. I haven't gone upstairs today, and everyone here can testify to that. I usually put the rosary on the nightstand because I'm afraid of accidentally soiling. That was why I had to go upstairs to pick it up. I have prayed before every meal. It is common, though I do not do so openly out of respect for Zong. I didn't lock my door, but I found that my door was locked after the accident today. That would explain the missing keys. I really don't understand why. There's something obviously wrong. What evidence contradicts Heron's testimony? Vincel mentioned that you said you went to pray before meals, and then the accident happened when Anzox went upstairs to bring the rosary for you. I was thinking maybe that was your intention. What? You set a trap upstairs in advance, then let Anzox go upstairs to trigger the trap. You can easily pretend it to be an accident this way, and you have an alibi. But I didn't go upstairs, not to mention I wasn't the last one who touched the letter. Such an accusation is rather inappropriate. It's too fishy. Far less fishier than you. For real, why am I fishing? Okay. Elegant came in with, like, she didn't even let me talk to her, and I was like, <gasps> and Elegant just comes in from the side, nope, don't say it. Wait. Wow, he looks really fucking ominous in that picture. Did you just say you pray before meals every day? Yeah, but he said he does so silently. Like, why would you notice... Why would you notice the priest doing this? I, I don't know. I feel like this is not the right string of inquiry, but we'll see. Yes, is there anything wrong with that? But that was the first time since you got here that you prayed for a meal. Th therefore, 
Maybe I remembered it wrong, but what does that have to do with the case? Although I'm not sure whether this is related to the case, I hope you can recall why today you suddenly remembered praying before meals. Very well. Usually whenever there is a chance, I pray before meals. In the past few days, to reflect the sensibilities of the tavern's owner, I chose to not mention praying before meals. Today is Christmas, and I thought that made sense to have a short pre-meal prayer on this particular holiday. Besides, there were those who asked me to do so. Something smells fishy. What do you mean it's not? It's normal. That means when I was in the monastery. What do you mean by out of respect for Zarn? It seems he is not so passionate about faith. So you didn't forget to pray these days, but rather you dared not. Hmm, maybe you can say that. Harry looked at the side and his voice from where. Christmas bearers should be normal. Yes. So you were the first one who thought about praying? Uh, I was about to say. Please let me get let me get in. I've been sitting on this Vincel thing this whole time. Yes. Why didn't you say so earlier? Oh shit. Did anyone else want you to do this? Yes, why didn't you say so earlier? I, how should I know? Is it important? Of course, it's very likely whoever proposed it is the criminal. It was not me, it was... He just wanted to make us believe he initiated the prayer, but he, now he was stunned. It was Vincel! What? Wait a minute, didn't you propose to pray before the meal? I'm trying to remember who said it. Who proposed to pray before the meal? It was Vincel who did it. I saw him done it. Oh God, now it's gonna ask me for testimony. And to back up what I said. Um, no. Heron suggested, no. Heron's rosary, blah, blah, blah. The rope, blah, blah, blah. Second floor, blah, blah, blah. Can I just not go to the log and point to the line where he said the thing? Vincel said the prayer before the meal was Heron's own proposal. It wasn't me! That's what he said, so he'd be acquitted and framed me. I turned to look at the links. You have anything to say, Vincel? I indeed reminded Heron to pray. Why do you think that means that I would murder someone? If I wanted to kill Anzax, why didn't he just Anzax go upstairs and help me pick something up? Why would I bother to remind Heron to remember to pray before the meal? What if he went upstairs by himself? Impossible. This is all wrong. You're busted, mister. Anyone who's been in the tavern these days will find out. You can use Heron to get to Anzox. Why? How could he use Heron to get to Anzox in the trap? Because they're getting close. In the past few days, Heron has often called on Anzox and asked him to do things for him, like pouring him drinks and taking a spoon. So it was natural for him to get to the rosary upstairs, because the murderer took advantage of Anzox's tendency to help Heron and used to set up a trigger for the trap. And who among us do you think is most familiar with traps, alibis, and crimes of all sorts? Oh wait, no, that's Vincel speaking. Oh shit. And who among us do you think is most familiar with traps, alibis, and crimes of these sorts? You, my good detective. And it's not true. But the tomcat over there is also suspicious. You leave Elegant out of this. She's suspicious as shit, but she's my suspicious as shit. Elegant flexes her paws quietly. Her, uh, her claw sliding out. Yeah, she's getting she's getting ready all the throwing daggers that she has hidden under that habit. Therefore, if the murderer used a trap to kill someone, I assume only Roman can do it. That's true. I do know these things because of my profession. I'm not sure everyone in this room, even Anzox, can come up with one or two simple traps like that. Only three things are needed to make a trap in this case: the wooden handle, the rosary, and the key to Heron's room. Let's start with the wooden handle. The wooden handle was broken upwards. The handle was broken upwards. What? I remember the handle wasn't bent that way. 
I guess I forgot one of the key pieces of evidence. The wooden handle uh, was torn by the rope. The handle was torn off by the rope and the letter was listened in there. Sorry. Yeah, was, oh yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Hang on, yeah, my bad. It was broken downwards. <laughs> Vincel's like, is this guy fucking serious right now? After breaking the handle, the suspect inserted the handle back into the slot. Does there have any evidence to support your theory? It's pure speculation. It's not because... What can prove that the suspect inserted the handle back in? No, no, no. There are no colored disposition splinters. The splinter was like this one? Because there's no color deposit on the cross section of the wooden handle. Why? He inserted it as soon as it broke, so the fracture surface had no chance to get dirty, I guess. Is that not, it's not the statement that was wrong, it's just a bit far fetched. Oh, okay. So that wasn't right. Because the wooden handle supported the letter, so if the wooden handle was not put back in place, there would be no letter, no way to hang the letter. How should I put this? Not necessarily. Because uh, eh. the rope was wrapped around the handle. What of it? That, you know. Are you sure it wasn't the splinter thing? And it was broken downwards. So you didn't do the same thing. I guess so. I guess it's the last thing. The splinter was blunt. I don't know what that means, but I guess it's the right answer. Because the splinters were broken. After the suspect broke the handle, he inserted it back in the direction of the splinters and pressed it tightly. That way, the friction blew the splinters would cause the handle to get stuck there. If he properly adjusted the handle, it would support the wooden ladder. When someone wanted to lower the ladder and started to untie the rope, the handle would come loose and the ladder would fall unexpectedly from overhead. In the process of reinserting the handle back in and loosening it, it was inevitable to break a few splinters. So the suspect should have done just that. That sounds reasonable, but it still brings us no closer to identifying the suspect. Then there is the rosary. When we found Anzac's, the rosary was on his back when he was knocked down by a ladder that suddenly fell. This shows that... It was on his back. This shows that the rosary was left on Anzac's after he was knocked down. That doesn't make sense. The scene was watched. Zon blocked the suitcase and so no one could get through. That is true. Where was the rosary? It was on, it was on his back, dude. That shows the rosary was it. Does it make sense? Seamus watched someone walk through it. That is true. Where was the rosary? Uh, now I'm not sure what you mean. What? No, that's wrong. I'm sorry. That one? No, that's in my room. Is it over here? That shows the rosary was in Aaron's room. So why did Anzox not open the door but move the ladder? Because the door was locked. He wanted to get to the attic to get the key. But the attic only has the key to the empty rooms. Besides, why was the rosary with Anzox? According to reasoning, the rosary should still be in Heron's room. Let me think again. On top of the ladder? If Anzox saw what he was looking for on the ladder, it was natural for him to lower it. Oh, then the ladder fell on Anzox, and the rosary hanging on the ladder would fall on his back. But why did Anzox check the ladder? If he was looking for the rosary, but definitely not look there. We'd only find it in Heron's room. Because Heron's room was locked. Anzox couldn't open the door, and when he turned to go downstairs to ask Heron from the keys, so the rosary hang on the ladder. He would naturally reach out to pull the twine wrapped around the handle, trying to lower the ladder to get the rosary, but just triggered the trap set up by the criminal. Next is Heron's key. <sighs> Thanks to Heron's testimony, we now know that his room is generally unlocked. His key was on the nightstand, and he hadn't moved it. According to Zarn, there are two keys to each room in this tavern. Then the second key was... On the keychain was on the keychain that Zarn usually carries with him. By the way, it seems like my keys disappeared for a while this morning. At first, I thought it was confused, but now it seems maybe the murderer took my keychain? When did you find the keychain was missing? I put it on the counter and went down to the cellar. When I returned, it was gone. When did you rediscover it? After playing around with darts, I found it on the counter. In this case, there was enough time for the murderer to bring the keychain upstairs, lock the door, and then return. In other words, the killer should be someone who approached the counter while Zahn entered the cellar and went upstairs while the keychain was lost. When the key reappeared, the killer should also be near the counter. Quick Q&A. Oh, okay. What do you want me to click on? A weapon. The weapon is the ladder. <laughs> Anzox was hit by the ladder, and can support this assumption. Besides, the murderer could hardly perform this trick in front of everyone else. The method is the trap. 
Let's talk about how this happened. Deductive reasoning. Arrange the... Oh god, this shit again. Okay. I'm gonna save as many times as I can in case I fuck this up and they take me out to be hung. These... These... The suspect never touched the rope. We know that from the sniff result. And the suspect didn't take away the rosary. That was Heron. When you say took the rosary away... Yeah, okay. So the verb is slightly different from what I would use. Broke the ladder. And then reminded Heron about... Go easy enough. The suspect is gonna be that Vincel guy. Why are you always against me? Because you murdered someone. You're not taking it personally. I've got a vital, vital I've got vital proof that you are the murderer. <laughs> what evidence do you have? I went upstairs right before you, and the handle was in perfect shape. Who else could it be? Now, the motive. This I do not know about. When it comes to the motivation. Can it just be like... Uh, can it like just be what happened with Sean and Kane? They knew each other before and separated because of conflict? I think it's impossible. Firstly, they rarely communicated today. I don't think they would keep their countenance if they had met before. Secondly, if Anzac said they'd sell something, and Vincel wanted to murder him, Anzac should at least take precautions. In a nutshell, I think Vincel's real motivation is... His target was someone else. Maybe his target wasn't Anzac or someone else, so obviously we can't find a motivation from Anzacs. They overestimated our famous detective Roman. Wait, what are you talking about? My target is very definite for beginning into Anzacs. What? My target is Ant. I didn't expect you to admit it that quick. Vincel could- Seriously? I got it wrong and Vincel was like, You're bad and wrong as a detective and this is why I killed him. And so I clenched his fist and let an angry girl in. Sorry. See, that was all part of my incredibly clever plan to entrap him in a lie. Who cares? It was me, Hurt and Zucks. I have to admit that you're so gentleman and completely guilty. And you would like to tell me your motivation? Anyway, you have already confessed your crime. No, thanks. Okay, well, I am curiosity. I guess we have to continue. Although the motivation is not clear at all, now that the Lynx has pleaded guilty, let's start to summarize the case. In other words... Ah, oh, he looks so cool in this art! And so it started to set a strap in the morning. In the morning, Zarn explained the situation to us and suggested that everyone try to stay together in the hall and only leave the room one at a time. While this would avoid incidents between two people, it also gave Vincel the chance he needed. Oh, is that elegant? Oh, look at him, they all look so good! Utilizing the rule that only one person could go upstairs at a time, he had enough time to set up the trap without worrying about being caught. It was suspicious to let Anzox go upstairs and trigger the mechanism directly. Fortunately, Vincel knew that someone could order Anzox around, namely Heron. Vincel took something from the counter while Heron Lazarne was busy in the cellar. That was the keys. The tavern keychain. He took the keys that Zarn had removed from his waist and left on the counter. Then he went upstairs to open the door and took the rosary from Heron's room and hung it on the ladder. But Vincel made a mistake. He didn't know that Heron never locked his door, so when he came out, he locked the door like everyone else. He broke the handle of the ladder, inserted it back in place, and went downstairs. Until dinner, no one upstairs to trigger the trap, and Vincel's plot was more than half successful. At dinner, once Vincel reminded Heron to pray before dinner, Heron asked Anzox to go upstairs. Anzax went upstairs and found the door was locked and looked around. See, look how happy he is. Ah, oh, I looked the rosary. Perfect. Seeing the rosary hanging on the ladder, he naturally went out to undo the twine around the handle. The rope came loose with the handle, and the ladder fell down on the guideway, hitting Anzox. This is your plot, Vincel. Am I right? Link kept his eyes wide open and pulled the gloves back and forth. His sweat dripped down from the ends of his fur. All right, you win. So what do you intend to do with me? And I'll bring you to the justice, of course. Whoa, hey, wow, 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 Zarn. You just whipped that shit right out, huh? Zarn picked up a length of wine and caught Vincel from behind and tied his hands. Tied his hands? Dude, he gave him the full Shibari treatment. Look at that shit. Just hurting someone is a crap of crime. Don't you know that? Shut up. I don't know. Not so hard. Be gentle with my wrists. You are no longer a guest now. You're a dangerous criminal and endangered the safety of my guests. Why should I treat you gently? And so glared at me, trying to get rid of the rope and bound his hands behind him. Untie me, wretched son of a- 
Zorn grabbed Vincel around the chest and hoisted him easily in the air. Vincel screamed silently, banging all of his teeth as the breath whooshed out of his lungs. <laughs> we threw him in the fucking basement. I just cleaned up the cellar this morning. Perfect place for a bastard like you to spend a Merry Christmas. Vincel, Vince stretched his neck and bent down, trying to sink his teeth into Zorn's arm. Zorn turned around and pressed Vincel's head aside. Don't force me to gag you. Vincel was still trying violent, vainly to bite Zorn and he reached out a pile of flaring junk. Here, let me give you a hand. No, you don't want to touch it. Is that smelly, is that smelly cleaning cloth in the kitchen? Zorn grabbed something on top of the pile of clutter and stuffed it in Vincel's mouth. Vincel's eyes went wide and he began to shake his head, trying to spit it out. The color and texture. It looks like uh, Vincel had one of Zorn's unwashed socks in his mouth. This is getting weird. He's right, I don't want to touch that. I can smell it from here. Zorn slung Vincel over his shoulder and walked past us. The achievement, though! So I covered his, uh, covered him with a handkerchief. Started feeling sorry for Vincel. Having something like that in his mouth, unable to escape the cell. He must be torturing him right now. We just left the attic after Zarn and Vincel. I sat by Anzox's bed, clutching his unconscious tail in my hand. Something is wrong. What? I believe I took the visual examination part seriously. No, the motive. Motive. But he refused to explain his actions. That's a bit strange. But the thing is, he also admitted to committing the crime. What's in it for him if the murderer isn't him? Sure, some merchants would betray their own mothers if they stood to gain a profit, but I can't think of any compensation that could make Vincel plead guilty on Christmas. No, there's just something that bothers me, and we'll think about it. But I exhaled and relaxed. If there's nothing else to do in the attic, let's go downstairs. I've been waiting for that Christmas feast. Speaking of which... Mr. Detective? Are you okay? What just happened? You just suddenly fell backwards. Fortunately, you were on a bed. Otherwise, it would have hurt. Uh, I'm fine. You must be starving. Can you still go downstairs? Go enjoy your stew. Maybe. I'll try. I slowly stood up with elegant support, dragging my weak legs down the stairs. The aroma of stew seemed to linger in the corridor, although I knew it was just pure imagination. Stew must be stone fucking cold after such a long time. Even the towel and the broth have formed a creamy layer of fat on the surface. Scent seemed to become stronger, but there's no sign of stew on the table. He came just at the right time. So I bought a, bought a pot of steaming stew from the kitchen. The others went in the mood for stew and returned to the rooms after I had bread and cold meat. I was worrying nobody would eat my stew. Gimme! <laughs> Just a second, Jesus Christ, what the hell? So I pulled two boards of stew and then laid a large portion into my bowl with almost all the meat and surprisingly a little broth. Actually, have all you want, I can't finish this. Actually, I prefer broth more. Thanks. I bowed my head and devoured my stew. After being warmed up, the meat was almost torn apart from the heat. The muscle fibers were slightly separated, and the fibers on the outer edge were almost peeled off. The broth was also much thicker than usual. But I was too hungry to be picky. I just wanted to fill my stomach and quickly. After three bowls of stew, I stopped eating, licked my lips, and looked around. All you was slow, lapping up the broth with her tongue. The spoon on the table was left on you. Oh, that's adorable. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 quick, quick. Zarn didn't seem to be very satisfied with the broth. He ate half a bowl and put it down on the side. Excuse me, I need to take some up to the attic while it's still hot. Please, enjoy yourselves. I also need to repair the ladder later. Son reached into his pocket and pulled a dagger in my hand. Here, I found this on Vincel. Keep an eye on it. So I went upstairs with the bowl of stew in each hand. I to wonder how he would climb up the ladder. And that is where we're going to have to cut it off for today. We, I guess we'll find out Vincel's motivation next time. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, <laughs> Roman's Christmas. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please remember to follow me on Twitch and subscribe to me on YouTube. You can find more information about this game in the description below this video. You can find me on social media at the Siege Andrew, on Twitter and Mastodon, on Facebook.com slash S15 Studios, on S15Studios.itch.io, where you can find all of my tabletop games, including Nightmare Theater and Delirium, and on s 15 studiosquarespacecom where you can find all everything else that I make, including short stories and articles, including the recent release of Lord Vermin. Once more, I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time.